Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Cappuccino with Amber. I am filling in for Amber today. I'm your co-host, Jennifer Marie. And I'm Stefano. And I'm the guru. So today we're going to start off with politics. You know, politics meaning Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, and even some military action on there. I think Stefano knows a little bit about it. Yeah, so last week was the ending of the Democratic National Convention, and then one of the speeches that really caught everybody's eye was from the father of a captain that was, he was killed in the Iraq War from a yeah, car bomb. Yeah, his son was. His son was, yeah. yeah. He actually got killed because he was trying to save his, you know, his mates from the car bomb. Yeah, and he had given a speech about how, you know, Hillary Clinton would be the best choice and that Donald Trump, he doesn't... You know, he's very insensitive, you know, and that his words were actually personally offensive. Yes. To Donald Trump? Well, Donald Trump's what he said. And to the Muslim community, I think it was, I think he was trying to make a, um, basically what Donald Trump does, he's, he instills fear into people. And so he was, and he was, so he, I guess he was attacking the, the, the Muslim soldier that died in, in, for this country. And it was just really, really offensive. And well, so, I mean, he didn't yeah. really mean it directly. I mean, just the way that he phrased his words and stuff. Like, for example, he compared his building buildings to the sacrifices that the families have made. And they were just saying because he compared what he did, the sacrifices that he made, it lessened, you know, the mm. the actual value of the sacrifice, you know, and that was offensive to them. Yeah. But and I think because in it, but it all adds up also because when you sit there, you're making these statements, these you know, terroristic statements about a a, a, a faith of people, and then you are attacking a soldier who went over to fight in the war for us. It's, it is kind of offensive, and I think, you know, I don't know, I think Donald Trump just needs to shut up. <laughs> I think he just needs to shut up right now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I mean, the author, actually, or the father is actually the author of the $1 Constitution that's been selling on Amazon. Mm -hmm. It's really been booming. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. So on Amazon, yeah, it was on the um, top 10 list of best-selling books. Yeah, it's like a $1 pocket edition Constitution. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, it's really, really awesome, and it's really taken off, you know. He was actually showing that pocket edition, it wasn't that specific one, but it was a similar version of that constitution while he was making the actual speech. And so that also probably is going to boost the sales on that. But it also leads to the point that because of that, what happened in the Democratic Convention and all that good stuff, that Hillary now has a lead, the lead in the polls. Yeah, she has a four-point lead, at least from what a CBS survey Yeah, it was had. like, what, 46% versus 42? 40, yeah, 46, 42. But compared to US, USC, um, USC LA Times also did a poll, and it shows that Donald Trump is actually enough 46 to 42. Oh, really? So, I think... Well, I mean, like, um, you know, not long ago, they were tied at both 42, 42. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's going to be a really close batter, battle, you know, no matter what happens. Yeah, and I think there was another survey. I'm not sure what the name was, but I think it also had Hillary at 43 and then Donald Trump at 40. Yeah, I think I'm it was. Not. It was. Well, I mean, you know, just by looking at the polls, no matter what the polls say, it's good. this is really head-to-head -head battle. You really don't know what's going to happen. Then. Yeah, you know, it's going to be up and down. Hillary might be in front right now, but I mean, a couple months ago, Donald Trump was in front. You know, it's going to be a question. Who do these polls? Because I've never <laughs> yeah. done a poll in my entire life. <laughs> Why, you know, I for mean, the election, yeah. I would love to participate in I, Who does them? I don't know, you might go to like, you know, um, poll.president.com. Yeah. Poll. <laughs> I don't know. Like so the we, we need to find that out it. so we can, because I actually read something about people that actually participate in the primary votes. Only, I think, um, only over 7 million people actually participate in it. And there's over, some, I think, 300 some million people in. America and that small amount are the only people that actually vote in the primaries, which is actually very troubling, you know. So that's why I'm just curious on who actually does the poll votes and how many people actually are voting when it comes to. Um, yeah, you know, I'm curious to, as to, to see that. how accurate the polls are versus yeah. the actual, you know, the votes at the end. Yeah, speaking of the votes, also, so they have it on there about how these votes, um, part of the reason that Donald Trump is, you know, his popularity is going down is because of what happened with his tweets toward Hillary Clinton about how, um, you know, you know, with the speech he was, you know, 
commenting back about it, mm -hmm. and then he was saying like, oh, well, Hillary Clinton, you know, voted for the Iraq War, yeah. and that's like, you know, he was insinuating that, you know, like... Hillary his, Clinton was the one who yeah, is Hillary the Clinton blame, him. is the reason to blame. But it's interesting, though, because his VP pick, Mike Pence, voted for the Iraq War as well as Hillary, so there's kind of, you know, a double standard with so, that. So, I, I actually didn't hear about that. Mike, well, who, who Mike he, Pence? He was his VP pick, so he picked him. Yeah, he picked Mike Pence, and there was an interview on 60 Minutes about how Mike Pence, he had voted for to go to Iraq, and then Hillary Clinton did as well. But of course, you know, Donald Trump has been harping on Hillary, but not on Mike, so it's kind of... It's a double standard. Critical. Yeah, and double standard. That's, I mean, that's usually what the Republicans do. I mean, if you well, want... I mean, I, yeah, I'd say politicians it's, it's, in general. Yeah, well, it is, the politicians in general, but I think when it comes to, to me, more well, my opinion, and it's, you know, I noticed that more with Republicans, where I see with Democrats, they are kind of hard on each other when they do do something they shouldn't do. So where it's like, oh, let's give that a pass. So I just, I think, Well, I just yeah. think I don't think it's okay yeah. to kind of stereotype Type. a specific, you know, uh, yeah, group. Yeah, you are correct, but it's just from what I watch and see also. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it's, it is, that's just my opinion what I get when I watch politics. Um, I do, I, I watch, you know, Fox News to MSNBC to CNN. And I noticed that a lot is like, it's like, oh, let's make an exception for this. You know, it's, that's okay. To where I know when I see MSNBC, if a Democrat do something they shouldn't do, they immediately jump on the press like, you shouldn't do that, you know. But I mean, I'm just iffy on both candidates, so oh, yeah. I'm still iffy on both candidates, so I don't. I'm still in the air, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so so we're like yeah. off ranting on a lot of politics now. Why don't we start talking about another topic? Yay. Let's get into Kim Kardashian. I mean, she's always in the news. And uh, if, have you, if you've seen the latest on Kim Kardashian, she actually has a new hairstyle. I'm actually even loving it. It's actually an ombre. It's brown faded into a caramel complexion. And of course, she lost so much weight. I mean, if you look at her legs, it's amazing. It's just I'm, I'm not much of a Kardashian. You're not a Kardashian? But yeah, I'm not. <laughs> my mother watches. You're not what? an American. I was like, <laughs> keeping up with the Kardashians, is that what it is? Yes, keeping up with the Kardashians. I think it's, even if you don't watch it, I think you cannot help but to be drawn into it when, you know, reading an article or anything on it. You can't help but be kind of drawn into it. Yeah. On it. I have seen one clip of that show before, <laughs> and then when I saw it, I was like, I can see why people watch it now, but I think there's so much drama. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's an but amazing But I mean, my mother trailer. watches it for like, because it goes to such amazing places, you yeah. know, she's like, okay, I want to go there, you know, I want to go to that hotel. That's what she uses it for, you know, mm -hmm. but um, Kardashians, it's just crazy. You hear Kardashian, that, that name popping up, you know, left and right, Jenner, Kardashian, you know, there's Caitlyn, and then there's Kylie, and then there's Kendall, there's Courtney, there's what, Chloe, we just talked about Chloe, about her, you know, her slim fit style, her new body yeah. and stuff like that. So there's just everywhere, you know, yeah. this, the mom this week amazing. it might be, you know, <laughs> Kim, next week it might be, you know, Chris, right, that's the mom? I'm gonna predict it, next week it'll be Kylie Jenner. Kylie? Something with Kylie, something with Kylie. Oh, I know, you know, Rob Kardashian has been in the news a lot. Totally forgot so, about that guy. You forgot? <laughs> you know, I try not to keep up with the Kardashians. <laughs> My life is as is. It's just like, man, that's enough drama. I don't need to be looking at someone else's drama, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just yeah. like, hey, you know, it's an my drama's train. enough. I don't need to be looking at other people's drama and getting stressed out about that. It's the best train Rick to watch whenever you feel down in your life about anything. You just look turn at the on Kardashians. Turn show, get a good laugh, and be like, you know what? You can <laughs> make, make you it. Make you feel better about your life. <laughs> you can goodness. make it. You can make it. Balavi Aluwalia. Managing attorney of Aluwalia Law Offices, a premier boutique law firm based in Dallas with an East Coast office. Practice in areas of corporate, immigration, and family law matters. It's your first choice, second opinion law firm. Call us. Let's talk. Contact us at 972-361-0606. That's 972-361-0606. You know, celebrities nowadays, though, like Kim Kardashian, I've heard that avocados are starting to get really big, <laughs> you know, in their diet yeah. and stuff. You know, I, avocados are actually really good for your skin. There's a lot of monounsaturated fats that are actually good healthy fats that lower your cholesterol. I love the fiber in it. I actually love um, 
avocados. I eat them with my tuna fish sandwich. Yeah, I've tried yes. that before. It is. I've, I've never, never tried it. Never tried it. Ama it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, I love awesome. avocados. I love guacamole. I mean, they're really healthy. You know, they say that it can even destroy some of the cancer cells, prevent cancer, mm -hmm. lower cholesterol, make Anti your skin look really nice, high in vitamin E. You know, there's a lot of good things about it. They call it the super, uh, the super. Yeah, food. super. Food. You can even make a mask. Put it on your face. Uh, yeah, and moisturize it. See, yeah, I wouldn't know about that. But. <laughs> yeah, just put it on your face. You know, you can do a lot with food. <laughs> you know what they always eat it. Also. Yeah, but I mean, I love avocado. I mean, they're easy to eat with chips, of course. That's carbohydrates, gluten, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I try to stay away from that. <laughs> but yeah. but yeah, you can do a lot with it. See, I've actually had chips that were fried in avocado oil, and then I've really? also had like avocado that's also been, um, I don't know, like someone's actually heated up avocado before and I tried it, and it surprisingly wasn't that bad. Because you huh. would think that like, if you ever like heat up, you know, like a fruit, because avocado is a fruit. Oh, I love avocado. Any, any certain way. I, I love avocado. Have you ever tried like um, avocado that's like, like you said, heated but like kind of steamed up and put on like a really nice platter with like some chicken? Yeah, <laughs> chicken and rice. <laughs> yes, that's really good. I like, I don't, it's weird. I, I never like cooking my vegetables. I don't like cooking it. I love eating it raw. Like to me, I have, um, I decided last summer I decided to do like an avocado spinach um, shake. And so I just like blend everything. Mm -hmm. I just blended it. It was amazing. I lost so much weight. Yeah, you know. And then I gained it all back. <laughs> I'm just really glad that the world, I'm, I'm starting it's to amazing. listen to the news and starting to read stuff. And it just seems like everything is starting to take a turn to where it's healthy. Healthy food. You know, food. Pokemon Go, you know, that's getting people out, walking, running, you know, out of their house, actually, but they're still on their phones, but they're actually, you know, burning calories and doing stuff. Avocados, that's healthy. You know, but now we got Pokemon Go. There's a new update. I don't play it myself. I don't know much about it, but uh, you know, Jennifer yes. knows a little bit. I love Pokemon Go. And I'm sure Stefano does too, because yeah. Stefano yeah. plays Pokemon you know, Go. I love it. It's amazing. I love Pokemon Go. I grew up watching it when you know, as a child. And there was actually a recent update over the weekend. And it caused a lot of um, angry, angry, angry players, um, users. And it removed the track. Um, the, the step track where yeah, it lets, the step when track it lets you track. know that you're close to a Pokemon, it removed it. Oh, you're speaking about yeah. gibberish to me right now. Gibberish? <laughs> yeah. I mean, my brothers, you know, they all play it, but for me, we're gonna have like, to we're gonna have to get you to download the app. Then. I mean, I have the app. I just don't play it. You know. Okay. So whenever, <laughs> okay, whenever you on the app and you're walking or you're driving, um, there's a Pokemon near your sight, and so it actually allow it actually allows you to see the Pokemon. And there's these like steps, these footsteps. That shows you. So you can follow the footsteps. You can follow the footsteps to the Pokemon. I and do. so they actually removed that. And they also removed the pep, the power saving mode or something. I think of that so. Sort. I'm not sure completely what the well, update I think what, was. Yeah. What it was is there's a power saving mode whenever you go out and you're actually walking because you're always like on your, on your phone. phone. You know, it saves the power, maybe the brightness or something like that. I mean, I don't know exactly what it is, but from what I've heard, I think that's what it is. Yeah, and so they actually removed that so the battery actually drain faster. So I mean, oh, but okay. the update allowed um, new software. You can actually customize your character, your avatar. Oh, okay. yeah, and even the Pokemon. So Stuff, I, no, I thought you'd know more about this. See, it. see, here's the thing, though. <laughs> like, it's like one of those things where I was addicted, like as if you're addicted to like junk food, but mm -hmm. then you like take that break because you know it's like healthy for you. But I mean, Pokemon yeah. Go, that's a lot of running and walking and stuff like that. I mean, it's not that. And awesome. three degree. But it's like, it's, I don't know, like for me, if I ever stare at a screen for a long time, my, it does something to my So did your craze eyes. just die down? Yeah, it's like one, I know, I really need to get back. <laughs> you but see, now back. with like this update, I'm like, should I update it or should I just like keep it the same? Well, I Keep it the same until you fix it. <laughs> well, what's going to happen, I think, in a lot of apps is like, they don't keep up with the previous version. So what they mm -hmm. do is you start getting a lot of bugs and stuff like that. And so if you're going to play, I think you, you should off, update it. Yeah, kicking you off with things that SOS. So, yeah. You know, everybody's playing right now on the iPhone device or the Samsung or just Apple. Or not Apple, but you like know, Android. devices. Devices. Right? And so I've heard that there's actually this new little watch thing that you can actually slap on your skin. Right? It's, yeah, they had, um, they recently announced it that, you know those Apple watches? Yeah, yeah. Well now, it's kind of like you take an Apple watch but then you take off all the metal, so it's just... The screen. Yeah, so it's just the screen that you can slap on your wrist here. And then not only that, you can also put it on fabrics, you can put it on clothing. Really? You can even put it, so like you could put it on this table, like where there's a curve here. How does that even work? It's like, 
I know that what they do is they take the circuitry and they had to make it out of a new material, so it's not made out of... So um, is the circuitry behind the screen, so it's still on the screen? I think so, and then it's also, they had to embed it into a plastic, kind of like a pla thin yeah, piece of plastic. In an organic based. Um, yeah, an organic yeah. based plastic. Organic based. In organic. In organic. organic. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then I think also for this watch, it's, they had to do a bunch of testing for it before as well, because if you're like putting it on a surface like that, you don't want it to like, you know, like somehow snap. Oh yeah. So they did the so testing So it's like flexible, it. right? Yeah, very flexible. I'm pretty sure it's flexible to where it can be put on a surface. Like if you had a cone and it had a point on it, and then it's like you're putting like a piece of plastic over it, it'll mold over it. Oh my goodness. So, um, so the device is like, so you were able to like just, yeah, it's just like just you're touching, touching your skin. Your, your skin? Dude, yeah. that's pretty crazy. I'm really interested. I'm just, in yeah, I, I'm, I'm serious to see what this new device is because I love technology. Uh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm excited to see what that, what that is. So. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, speaking of technology, so we talked about before about how Amazon, they have the drone system that's coming out. Oh yes, I did hear about that. It's coming yeah. out in like, what, 2017 or something? I think so. And, well, actually, the drone system, I think... They're kind they're of they're developing like it. it. Yeah, they're like right tinkering now. it right now. I know they're testing it. I know they've been testing it. But they, in 2017, I think it's supposed to launch big time. I think so. They're now, um, they're going to plan on testing it in the UK now. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, with technology, everyone is like, well, is there a risk to it? Is and there something? And of course, that... we're talking about robots and stuff. And you know, those robotic movies where the robots take over the world and stuff like that. There's always yeah. like, a, you know, a con to that. And what people are freaking out right now is actually, you know, about hackers. You know, these are UAVs, you know, um, what is unmanned one? aerial vehicles. Uh, there we go. Yes, that's right. And because they're unmanned and they can carry up to, what, 55 kilograms or something like that, um, they're afraid that people will actually hack into those, put bombs on it, grenades and stuff like that, and drop it into, you know, civilian areas. That's yeah. what people are worried about. People have, I actually have seen where people actually go in there and they alter the Android, I mean, the drone, to where they can actually play, put a gun on it. To where it's like shooting, and in fact, it was actually in the movie Purge. I don't know mm. if you've seen it. No, I do need to see it. Yeah. I've heard it's so, a good movie. yeah. So, and that actually was what scares me the most because I'm like, you know, you we in a high tech world already. I lock my phone because yeah, I mean, I think we anything can be accessed. Um, iRobot, right? Robot. Yeah, I see yeah, iRobot. Okay, that, that's yeah. pretty crazy with Will Smith. Yeah. I love the guy, but I mean, that's a really good movie showing you know the capabilities of a. AI, you know, artificial intelligence. Yeah. Pallavi Aluwalia, managing attorney of Aluwalia Law Offices, a premier boutique law firm based in Dallas with an East Coast office. Practice in areas of corporate, immigration, and family law matters. It's your first choice, second opinion law firm. Call us. Let's talk. Contact us at 972-361-0606. That's 972-361-0606. Zero six zero six. And you would think also that like this would be kind of like an issue that people would be like, no, this isn't going to happen, and then it's just you sweep it under the rug. But now actually, so there's a New York security firm that came out with this new malware. Oh yeah, it's a lot of hacking lately. We're talking about hacking terror or terrorists hacking into drones. You know the capabilities of that, and now people can hack into what printers and phones yeah, printers wirelessly. And phones. Yeah. It's also kind of funny because the malware itself is called Fontena. Oh yeah. So you would think it would be innocent, but then it's like... But yeah, you can tap into anything wirelessly. And actually, the way that they do it with printers and stuff is they use radio signals. Yeah, they use and, the um, radio And they can actually decipher the radio signals. It's kind of like a Morse code. And they can actually find out what you're saying or what's going through the information mm -hmm. or the hacker scan. It's yeah. actually pretty scary because you really can't figure out, you know, whether or not you're hacking. I mean, we got a printer here in the office. You know? Yeah, but you know what's even scarier though is the fact that they can then, like through the radio signals, they can then turn your phone into a speaker. So if you have like your phone around here somewhere and you know, like for us, we're just talking, if we had our phone near us and the person was hacking our phone, they could hear our entire conversation. Well, good thing we're not talking about classified well, yeah. stuff, well, right? Well, that's even with download apps though. When you download an app, it actually wants to access, you know, your contacts, Contacts, uh, location, voicemail, we even have fingerprint on the app and stuff like that. You know, that's pretty crazy. I didn't think about that. Yeah. If they can actually hack into the phone. I mean, fun, 
Uh, fun Fontana? Fontana. Fontana. Yeah, yeah, so I think Fontana right now can only do like audio hacking and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's only audio hacking. But for if, right it, now. if it gets more advanced and it actually hacks the systems to get all the information from that, that'd be pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah, I feel like though if they did hack it, they would use it mostly like for celebrities so that oh. they could like, <laughs> yeah, I guess you know, you know get free I pictures. Think, I just think <laughs> it's, it's just there's free really pictures. no privacy. I think just going into the future, I think there's really will be very little privacy going forward because we are so advanced and we wanted to technology and then the hackers are getting better and just going up and up and up and so on. So yeah, I mean. It's just crazy what technology is doing nowadays. You got the screens, you know, the screens are supposed to be wrapping around flexible going onto your hands, and they got unmanned out. aerial drones. Well, Star Trek predicted it a long time ago. No, yeah. <laughs> so. See, I just thought of something. It could be used by paparazzi. So you know how like with the paparazzi, they'll always like swarm celebrities? Now they don't have to swarm them anymore. Yeah, they can just exactly. tap into their, yeah, yeah it's pretty exactly. crazy. But don't phones come with um, like the software to always it's always um, running your phone to make sure there's yeah, the up. there's no virus or infection or no one you know outside on phones. Well, I know you know on computers they have like McAfee. They should have that on phones though. And yeah, I thought that was because I thought my phone had it. Because it just, when it runs, like, the apps and stuff, I mean, I it don't lets know. me know. <laughs> I'm not very technologically yeah. advanced. I mean, my phone barely even works. <laughs> <laughs> what phone you got? I got an iPhone. See? You, so you have an iPhone, too. So it's I have like, a Samsung. I mean, y'all probably need to get on board with Samsung. I got all Apple products. But, man. you know, iPhone is easy to hack into. You know, they call them jailbreak phones in prison. So... They can easily hack into the phones. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm just, yeah. I don't know. I try not to think about that stuff. You know, <laughs> technology, the more I think about it, the more crazy. The more crazy, crazy you go. Know, yeah, you get more paranoid. Like, I literally, whenever I have my phone, I like flip my phone over and I always use something to cover it up just in case. Oh, because of somebody, the front-facing camera? Yeah. Oh. So, you know, just in case somebody's watching, it's, it's scary. Yeah. See, I was paranoid, like, with my laptop because of that webcam. I had stuck um, a piece of paper over it with tape, and I had done that for, like, two years, but then I was like, who would want to hack into my computer? So I'm just like, I just took it off. It's like, you know, I have nothing confidential. Yeah, for real. I think, I'm I mean, is crazy there anything stuff. else that, yeah. I mean, we've gone over politics, we've gone over what? We've gone over technology, tech. we've gone over Kim Kardashian. See, there is a little silver lining, though, with these stories, and that they're looking into it now, and they want to standardize a radio frequency mm -hmm. so that it's easier to tell if anyone's ever hacking in. Mm, that makes sense, you know, to protect, you know, us. Well, well speaking of hacking, Miss um, Tween, the new USA um, teen, just recently, after she was crowned, um, her tweets, uh, tweet, uh, her it's a tweet. tweet. I don't have a Twitter account. I do apologize, but her, her tweet, <laughs> her tweet, I do apologize. Uh, her tweets were exposed to saying racial things. Well, I mean, it's uh, like she yeah. tweeted it herself, so yeah. it is technically hacking. And, yeah. But I mean, people saw they the They go tweets. back to it. Yeah, because like they you screenshot know, it. It's technology. Miss Teen of USA, you're supposed to be the role model for teenagers, mm -hmm. teenage girls. You know, there's two problems with this. First of all, there's a problem with um, her tweets. The, her tweets have the end word, yeah. and a lot of people found that very, very offensive. offensive. I think it was how it was written, though, because if you know anything about, you know, the whole black culture and using the N word, there's N I G G E R, and then there's which means it's, a, it's more degrading than. And I G G A, which they use to say it's a term of endearment, in my opinion. Yeah, like bro, I don't like, yeah, yeah, like homie. Yeah. I don't like it, period, but I know, like, I have, you know, I have white friends, my brother's cousin have white friends, so they get hood passes to where they can use the N word. <laughs> so, and that's what I think it was. I think she didn't really mean it as in a yeah, I mean, honestly, I mean, way. there's two different, you know, yeah. sides to this. First of all, there's the side that's like, okay, you're white. You should never use that word. Unless, and they, unless you get the hood pass. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's the other side, which is, you know, I'm, I'm 18 years old. I came out just came out of high school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you go to a public sky, high school nowadays, it's like white people, Hispanic people, black people, everybody's African American people. Everybody's, everybody's using that word. So on the other side of it, it's like she's just a teenager. She's yeah, 18 years she's old. Doing she what finds she it normal. Yeah. You know, that's what's normal in the culture nowadays. The mm -hmm. N word is used in regular vocabulary. Sure, yeah. And it, she didn't mean it in a degrading way. You know, that's the other side of it. But yeah, then the I other side is like, hey, you know, you shouldn't use that word at all. It's offensive to people. 
and you're supposed to be a role model to teenagers. I just think she, she should have just owned it. You know what I'm saying? She didn't I mean, apologize. She, 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 she didn't, she didn't she actually blamed publicly, uh, apologize. Yet. She blamed it on her personal struggle. Oh, yeah, her personal I'm like, struggle. girl, just own the word. Just say, look, you know, we teenagers, it's okay. I mean, you sit there, your body's music, and you rap music, and they saying N I G G A here and this and that. Yeah, man. I mean, just say sorry so, for just someone else. Yeah, just, just be like, yeah, I use it, you know? it, and just go on by your business. Just don't even worry about it. So, well, like yeah. the other side of this is Miss Teen USA. Not only did this Twitter thing kind of, you know, came about, but also what well, the other thing is, it did come on Twitter that the top five, the finalists for Miss Teen USA, yeah. all of them were. Blind. You know, white, white blonde, blonde, like blue eyes. eyes. The standard beauty. I mean, beauty. The standard. Uh, yeah. and I forgot who posted it. It was a model. It was Chrissy Teigen. Yes, that was yeah. her. She actually posted um, on Twitter, and she said, "You know, it's great to see the diversity in this." And it, it one sarcasm, sarcasm, high sarcasm. <laughs> and another one of the um, Twitter followers responded to that, and he's like. Oh, I thought they were all one girl doing different poses. So you can see the diversity <laughs> in yeah. the Miss Teen USA. And it's, it just makes some people mad to not see, you know, one person said it's great to see that today's culture, it's still, beauty is still twig, you know, white, blue eyes, I, yeah. And I think it's hair. mostly, um, I think they was really, uh, it wasn't really the, the teens they were attacking. I think it was more of the judges. They yes. said it was four white judges and one, um, I think, Hispanic judge. Uh -huh. So... To me, I think if you get a diverse, oh yeah, it's definitely not a diver, yeah. the girl's fault. Yeah, it's not. It's not their fault. Yeah. And so, I mean, and it is, you know, they, and they all are beautiful girls. So I don't. I mean, she's uh, you know the USA America. You know, I don't. I don't watch it. So I don't watch. I think it's very superficial. So I don't watch shows like that. <laughs> but to but me, but you watch Kim Kardashian. <laughs> but this is the thing about Kim Kardashian. <laughs> she real though, you know. <laughs> she real? What? I think like seventy five percent of her body is fake. But it's yeah. like a real personality, but then it's like with pageants, it's like you're putting on that facade. So, yeah, so that's why I'm not really into like pageants and things of that sort. But I think things should be more diverse. We should have more of a diverse coach. I mean, this is America. America represents the melting pot. Oh yeah, know? well yeah, so, just wrapping it all up. We yeah. talked about a lot of different things coming from technology, politics, and all that good stuff. The main thing that I kind of got from this today is that USA Today is really diverse. We're growing and amazing. all that good stuff. It's an amazing country to live in. I mean, it's not great. It never was great, but we can make it great because we're so diverse. Shoot. I say yeah. America's great. Yeah, but I think it's no, I think it's an amazing, amazing country. I think this is an amazing country. Mm -hmm. But I think when you look at the history of it, even to where it's at now, you, it's really hard to say that it well, is great. Well, I mean, it's growing. It's getting but better. It's, it's, it's great. getting better. We, we are way farther than what we used to be. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, yeah, guys. So, that kind of wraps up today for Cappuccino with Amber. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. You know, I'm your host, the guru. Jennifer. And Stefano. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I hope to see you guys next time. Mother Teresa said, I alone cannot change the whole world, but I can cast a stone across the rivers to create many ripples. Inspired by Mother Teresa, Sir Edi, and Imran Khan, I have moved to Pakistan to help the needy and deserving of my beloved country, Pakistan. But I cannot do it alone. I need you to join hands with me in this worthy cause and make a difference in the lives of those who cannot help themselves, to save the children, to empower the women, and to help disabled so they can earn a respectable living and provide for themselves and their families. Just $10 can make a huge difference. Please log on to HHCS online Dot org and click donate. For more information, you can email anjum at hhcsonline.org. I assure you that your $10 will be spent on needy. Your $10 will change lives. So please help. Thank you.
Harvey Aluwalia, managing attorney of Aluwalia Law Offices, a premier boutique law firm based in Dallas with an East Coast office. Practice in areas of corporate, immigration, and family law matters. It's your first choice, second opinion law firm. Call us. Let's talk. Contact us at 972-361-0606. That's 972-361-0606.